What's up, everybody? We did it! Did <laughs> steal the other thing? No. We just sat, we didn't just sit here for twenty minutes trying to figure out how to start a podcast. We just need to say hi. Hi. We just want to say hi, and we can't figure it out. All right, bye, guys. See ya. No, so this is it. This is the Kayfabe Kaiju Podcast. KK, one letter away from getting put on a list. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop making the joke, right? No, we can keep it. I, I, no, we don't have to keep it. We can just use it occasionally. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It, yeah, it's kind of funny? No, it's a different group. This also isn't a secret show. <laughs> and Joe Rogan's not here. <laughs> we just name off all of our podcasts. All the podcasts we listen to. Oh, just... No, our mighty. We'll keep it off topic. Uh, fuck it. I also listen to Star Wars 77. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just straight up call it out. Uh, I couldn't think of anything clever. This will be a, a big heaping bowl of dude soup. Um, yes, that's a podcast. It's fucking great. <coughs> So this is going to be the nerdy podcast of futurevillains.com. Um, if you don't know, me and Brian do... Okay, so I'm Jacob, best in the realm. Right. You and are. <laughs> Thank you for approving you're that. You're right, yep. Uh, can confirm. I am Brian, Brian Man Peacock. And uh, we also do the Future Heels podcast. If you like wrestling, you should look that one up. You can find this podcast and that podcast on FeudTrueVillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. YouTube, Facebook, it's everywhere. It's on iTunes, all the good stuff. So, this one is going to be similar to Future Heels, episode 24. With a twist! is the title of that one. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, where we talked about some nerdy stuff. This is yeah. going to be a purely nerdy podcast with wrestling occasionally, sorry, I hiccup, wrestling occasionally coming up if it pertains to something nerdy like a uh, fucking Zack Ryder, God, I couldn't remember his name, yeah. I almost said Zack Efron. With like, Zack Ryder <laughs> in the Ghost Heads documentary right. I just watched. Or Xavier Woods hosting Kind of Funny Life 3. So, those, you know, if that stuff comes up, then sure. Uh, and hopefully this will cause less tangents on our other show. Yeah, because that it is won't, an issue. We gotta get it, it out. Should. Yeah, it won't, but it should. Um, so I think this podcast we're gonna be talking about Gundam's Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Uh, I got some Fire Emblem stuff. Uh, uh, we're gonna talk about Dota for a minute from the international uh, versus the Olympics because I just thought uh, that was fucking fascinating. Okay. Um, and then you wanted to talk about some drone racing. Yeah. Because if you've listened to the Future Heels podcast at all, Brian figures out a way to get drones in every once in a while. Yeah. And it's just, like, not... It doesn't fit in there. He just forces it in. That's what I do. Just forces it. No one wants it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this kind of gives us the outlet to talk about all the other things we like to do. Yeah, pretty much every other thing. Yeah. Uh, unless... Nope, I don't like any sports. Mm. Except pro wrestling. And we already have a podcast for that. Right. So. We're good. Yeah, we're good. And this one, we just talk about whatever, so if we want to talk about something else, fuck you, we will. Get over it. Or or not fuck you and please listen to our show. Yeah, don't... <laughs> don't listen to what he said. <laughs> <laughs> God, I gotta get rid of that guy. So, uh, drones. You, you've been dying to talk about drones. Yes. So you have, uh, a, what, a parrot? And then you have that other weird one that doesn't work. Oh, yeah, I have a few now. Yeah. I have, uh, the parrot AR2, which is pretty cool for taking some videos. Um, it's, uh, it's okay. It's, got it's, pretty, a, pretty, it's a pretty solid drone. It's got a decent camera on it. It's fun to fly. You fly it off the app on your phone. Record video straight to your phone. Pretty handy. Um, 
But it wasn't quite what I was looking for. And I also got another one. It's another camera drone. It was just... It didn't work when the guy sold it to me. I kind of that one even have a name? Um, it's the UFO spy drone or something like that. That just got you on the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or no, the Panther UFO spy drone or something. Not um, Black Panther spy drone, right? <laughs> um. So that hasn't worked since I got it. I should. But those be aren't the drones you're interested in. No. Turns out. Yeah, I thought that's what I wanted. Um, they don't go fast enough for you. Yeah, they're not. They're not fast. How fast does the parrot go? Um, it's gotta be kind of quick. It's in the air. I think you can go. They can go at least twenty miles an hour. I mean, yeah. it's fairly quick once it gets going, but it's not very maneuverable. Yeah, it doesn't have a it has speed, no agility. Some speed, no agility. Some speed, no no agility. Um. It's cool to fly up, fly around, get yes. some cool video. It's a starter but, drone. Um, yeah, it wasn't what I wanted. So, I got on Facebook like I always do and search for groups. Because I think Facebook groups are like the best thing ever. Joined a bunch of groups. And I've typed in, uh, you know, our county and drones. And thinking, you know, obviously there's nothing. I'm going to have to start my own group. Like I've done a billion times yeah. before. Um, and a Citrus County drone racing group pops up. I'm like, what? There's no way these guys are still active. Like, every time I find something cool, they've been, you know, it's been since 2013 was the last time someone posted. Or you get it, forced out of it. Or it was, uh, <laughs> and that post was for, like, Buy one, get one free Oakleys or something. Jeez. Um, so I go on there, and sure enough, they're still active. They're still kind of just starting. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Uh, they invite me to come out to watch. Uh, I came out, and I watched them practice. Uh, help set up and take down the course a little bit. and uh, Eventually got a got gifted a racing drone. Right. Um, Didn't you have one before that? Or had it, that had not gotten here yet? Oh, I ordered a micro yeah. drone that I was going to put a camera on, which the camera just came in. I was going to say, day. and you are. Yeah, the camera just came in. So Now, okay. I have been trying to get Brian to record videos of him doing these things, adding the camera and whatnot. So right. I think that'd be neat. But it is very hard to do. But it's not. When all I have is my phone. Just prop up your phone. But at the same time, I use my phone to... Are they okay? What's your ear? Are you stop? I think we're just hearing things. Huh? I think we're just hearing things. Maybe. <laughs> so you need to use your camera to look up stuff too, right? Yeah, like I'm using like use your laptop for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I look at, I'm killing all your excuses. Yeah, killing them dead. Killing them dead. Uh, especially like if we get that webcam, then you can definitely do it. Oh yeah, that'll make things a lot easier. I think we're gonna do some like watch alongs and other doofy things for our channel, future villains. F e w t r u e v i l l a i n s dot com. I'm glad you can do that because I can't. Do that. <laughs> I'm glad I can do it. I'm glad I can spell too. Yeah, I, I cannot spell to save my life. I I can spell great. I'd love to do a, a whole episode on that spelling. Oh god. Um, a. But anyway. B. Uh, yeah. So I got real interested in the drone racing and. Spent a lot of time on the DRL simulator. Yeah. Trying to catch as much DRL as I can while not having cable, which is very difficult to do. Which uh, is fucking stupid to me. Does It does not make sense. They gotta get on freaking Twitch or something. Fox Sports has right. their series coming out through DR1, Drone Racing 1, obviously. Right. And that is going to be on Twitch, I believe. They're probably going to be the first one to do well then. Fox Sports, 
uh, Sky Sports, I think. Right. And Eurosport or something okay. like that. Um, is Are they associated with DRL? Nope, it's a different group. Is it the other one you've showed me? Um, nope, this is like a third, a third? one. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to come in and they're just going to do it right, hopefully. Hopefully. Jeez. And, um... What's the, what's the other one I was talking, thinking of? Uh, Multi-GP. That's it. That's kind of like a, um... Like, grassroots. Like, anyone can kind of do it. Like, they don't really... They're not on TV or anything. Right. Like, like, technically, I'm a part of it because I've signed up on the website. And okay. I can register for races and it's stuff. It's like the whole Magic the Gathering, like, you sign up for an ID and you get points and stuff. Yeah, it is a national ranking. And right. You, that's how you move up. What's your national ranking? I mean, I, I <laughs> zero. I haven't flown any races. I can kind of turn my drone. It's ex extremely turn? hard to fly. Can you fly. go straight? Yeah, I can go straight. Okay. Other than that, I mean, it's, it's a wreck. But it's um, it's a lot of fun to fly. I'm not good at it. It's uh, spent a lot of time in simulators and uh, a lot of crashes in real life too. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, DR1 does because yeah, it looks like they're it is going to be like an international race. Like they have uh, they are showing places all over the world where they're going to be racing. Uh, they're not going to have the cool... It doesn't look like they're going to have the cool, like, neon light gates that DRL had, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have... Because um, in DRL, everyone flew the same drone. Right. I don't know if they're doing that or if they're letting people fly the stuff that they could build themselves. Both are super interesting. Yeah. Um, it's probably going to be standardized, though. I would guess. Probably... But building is a huge, huge part of the drone racing scene. Oh, sure. So, I don't know. I feel like they could have a league for both. And that's kind of what, that's what multi-GP does. Yeah. They have a spec class, and then, you know, you can fly in the other classes as well. So, yeah, that's something to keep an eye on. That's DR1? Yes, DR1. So, we'll have to, maybe we can do a watch along for that, because we should have the web, what is it? Um, I'm not sure. DR1, I can look it up. That sounds interesting. Uh, we, we took a trip up to uh, Gundam from Japan. Which yes. I think we talked about in episode 24 of Future Heels. Yeah, I think that's what... Yeah, and we went to uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, and it was on ESPN. We got to watch it at Buffalo Wild Wings, which was awesome. Yeah, we got to see the uh, finals. Which, yeah. Uh, congratulations to Jet for winning. The second. Again, right, yeah. Yeah. He's Damn. the only one to win a uh, two world titles. Uh, only person to win any. <laughs> He's won both of them. That's pretty cool. I hope they get a third season at least. So DR1 Racing, uh, fueled by Mountain Dew, of course it is. Yep, it's sponsored by Mountain Dew, DHL, the delivery service, and Air Hogs. And a couple other ones, I think. Uh, let me see. Champion Series... Uh, Christ, I just saw it airing on something. I don't know. Maybe it hasn't been announced yet? Oh, they have the different na oh, races on here. Hold on. I'll go back. Oh, that looks cool. First one is Trona Pinnacles. Uh, Death Valley, California. Made by Mother Nature's Nightmare. That looks cool. Big rock towers. Uh, race 2 is the Mojave Boneyard. Uh, it's the sport of the future rises from the at, rises from the ashes of aviation's past. It was like just a bunch of broken down planes and stuff. Nice. Race 3 is DHL Tower. Uh, their man with the tower challenges five teams of pilots to pass if they dare. Dangerous and illegal. Uh, overtake the tower and dive to the finish line. That was cool. Spike Island, a 6th century monastery, a 24-acre fortress, the largest prison in Victorian times, and now a drone racing track. Yeah. Good lord. Race 5 is Benoan Castle. The pirate queen, Grace O'Malley, called her home, Vi call her home. Vikings fought and died on her beaches. The British army built within her walls 
a World War I tower to watch their enemies, and now five teams will pilot sheer rock and skirt a raging ocean as they add an epic drone race to the historic record dating back to the 1500s. Championship race is the Isle of Man. Not only will the Championship Series Finals fly the historic Isle of Man, but it is only fitting they will do so 110 years after the very first Isle of Man TT race. Fifteen pilots will battle in the backyard of the world's most dangerous race where they'll risk everything as they dive off a cliff to grab victory from the ocean below. Fuck, they got me hyped. That, that sounds pretty badass. I feel like these guys are finally gonna... Uh, that guy has a tiny whoop shirt on. Uh, they're gonna get this right. Oh, it's a tiny whoop team! Apparently they're sponsored by Tiny Whoop. What is this, guys? Learn more. Play video. I don't want to play video. Is it not, like, when it... Fucking A. I'm hyped. Sounds pretty fucking exciting. It does. Sponsored by Mount... This is what I said on that podcast, though. I said they need sponsors. Yeah. They need somebody to dump money into this drone racing thing. A DRL had sponsors, but they weren't, like, sponsored by Mountain Dew or sponsored by... Yeah, they probably weren't on the level of Mountain Dew. They were, like, people who owned, like, sports teams. What? I mean, that's pretty huge. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are big-time people who sponsored it. But this... Guess what month it's coming out. It's gotta be October. Yup. <laughs> Everything's happening in October. Freaking, uh... Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans... The Stranger Gotham, things, Arrow, Flash, Arrow, Flash, uh, Walking Dead, Walking Dead, everything. This, I think something else I'm interested in comes out in October. Yeah, October is gonna be busy. It's gonna be a good month for this podcast. It's gonna be watching TV. All yeah. Time. So that's gonna be on Twitch. Yeah, it's probably gonna be going to uh, Universal for my daughter's birthday in October. Oh, really? Yeah, we were cool. thinking about doing that. Taking her to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, if this... Whoops. If this is going to be on Twitch and stuff, I I feel like it's going to be on Twitch, but it's going to be easily accessible on the internet, which is what they need. Yeah. That's going to take us into this next story. They need easy access on the internet, and they need big sponsors. And that will take them very, very... So if Fox is able to pull this off, uh, I think we're going to have our next big sport. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Did you see it at the Olympics? <laughs> uh, maybe. I could. Um, cause speaking of the Olympics, they brought up recently on... Uh, show I was watching um may have been the kind of funny morning show but uh I have some numbers here to go along with this story the Dota 2 international tournament happens every year um let's see and it's like a 10 million dollar prize it's huge uh let's see uh, 5 million dollars that, that's the prize I just heard on the radio because we had a uh, we have a Call of Duty tournament going on this weekend yeah. in Orlando. Uh, someone called in and said that there was another tournament for some game. I don't know what game, but the prize pool was crowdfunded. Yes, that's this. And it was he said it was up to twenty four million. That might be this year's because I think it's getting ready to happen. Okay, maybe that's what it was. So what it is, is this game Dota 2, it's a MOBA on Steam. It's actually free to play. Completely free, all the characters are. Alright, for someone who doesn't play video games, what is Dota? Dota is a mod for a PC game called Warcraft 3, which is a strategy game okay. in the Blizzard universe. And what does it stand for? What? Dota? It stands for Defense of the Ancients. Okay. Um, and basically, you have a team of five people. There are three lanes. You have a fairly constant stream of enemies going down these lanes. You need to kill your team's stream of enemies and towers along the, along the way. 
and get to their ancient and kill it. Which is a big... I think I think now it's just a big kind of sphere you have to kill. Oh. And you win. Um, and in between all these lanes are jungle and other creatures that you can fight and make yourself more powerful. You level up. You buy items from vendors. And all within this time frame. And Dota is... Arguably the biggest one other than League of Legends, and they're in a genre of game called MOBA, which stands for Mo- Multiplayer Online Battle Arena, which doesn't fucking describe it at all. <laughs> it's the best genre name ever. Um, the way they, they crowdfund this thing is every year, because the game is free to play, all the cosmetic stuff you pay for. Right. If you want your character to look cool. They also do, uh, it's a book you can buy. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Let's see. Dota 2 International book. Uh, Battle Pass. I don't think that's what it's called. But it's like a basically a book. Mm-hmm. And what it's going to do is, as the game is going on, it's going to provide you with stats and all kinds of neat stuff. Thank you also. That's like how you watch it. Um, it gives you special in-game items. It does all kinds of neat things. I'll have to figure out exactly what it is. But you pay however much it is. $20, whatever it is. And I think they take all of that money, or most of that money, and put it into the prize purse. Oh, okay. So that's how they do it. And, uh... They rent out massive arenas. Yeah, I... I know uh, the Call of Duty one was in the Amway, which is where the Orlando Magic play. That's cool, I didn't know that. And... I think it was awfully close to being sold out. So it is in the Key Arena in Seattle, Washington. Okay, yeah, I think that's the one they were talking about then. Yeah. Uh, Price pool is $24 million. Yep, that's exactly 18 teams. Uh, Oh, yeah, it is called the Battle Pass. Okay. That's what they're calling it this year, apparently. Uh, And there, there are qualifiers and everything for it. The funny thing is, is uh, on the radio show when they were talking about uh, how many people they were able to fit into the Amway. Yeah. They were uh, they were talking about how the uh, president of the Orlando Magic needs to take a peek out of his office window and kind of look around and see what's going on. Cause right. Yes, the Orlando Magic haven't been doing very well, so they haven't been drawing a lot of fans. Oh, jeez. So, yeah. So... The Battle Pass, I can't find a price on it. Hold on. 25% of the price goes to the prize pool. Oh, okay. Let's see, Battle Pass price. Prices! Gotta click on the link. Gonna take me to the Dota store. Current prize pool is $24 million. Battle Pass, level 1 is $9.99. Level 75 is $36.99. I don't know what the different levels do. So you can buy it. You'll have access to Silt Breaker. Is that right? Yeah. An exclusive multiplayer campaign. Oh, okay. So this has always been like a multiplayer game. I guess mm-hmm. now they're adding like a co-op story mode to it. Oh, okay. Which is very cool. Because I think I've shown you this. I have Dota Hero Clicks. And the characters, the design and the story and everything is so cool in this game. I remember seeing the hero clicks, but I had no idea what Dota was. Now by you know. The, by the way, when I said for those who don't play video games, I was talking about myself. Yeah. Because they were talking about it on the radio, and I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck Dota stands for. That so, happened now. I've known about Dota for a long time. Right. Because it's hard not to, but... I never knew what it's looked for. So it looks like the Battle Pass, uh, you just play the multiplayer thing, and you get levels, and you complete quests, and it probably, it probably gives you different things. It, yeah, it looks like it gives you different... Um, Swash Buckler the Master of Arms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it gives you different mounts, gives you different armors. That's cool. Cool. And, yeah, I think it gives you different stats and whatnot. Players on the winning team can give tips of battle points to allies or enemies. Players cannot tip. Blah, 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 blah. Took, oh, you can wager your points. 
Okay. That's cool. So it was like betting without any real losing anything. You're just That's losing points. Cool. They do a very, very good job with all this. The reason I bring this up is because China is going to have a international games type thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's something that they do. It's very similar to the Olympics. It has something to do with the Olympics game. is somehow officially attached to them. They're going to have esports this year. I think they're going to have uh, Dota, maybe Dota, definitely League of Legends. StarCraft? Uh, yes, for sure, because StarCraft is huge. Uh, man, what else was it? I can't remember. Chinese, let me see. I just know StarCraft is gigantic over there. 2022 Asian Games, that's what it is. That's where there's going to be. Uh, FIFA 2017 is the only game confirmed to appear. Okay. It will also include a multiplayer online battle arena game, League of Legends or Dota 2, and a real-time strategy game such as StarCraft 2. Which may also be StarCraft 1. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, let me open it. Uh, so a company, Ali Sports, a subsidiary of Alibaba. You ever been to that website? Kind of like Amazon or eBay, but it's just Chinese stuff, it seems like. Oh, all the time. Uh, they invested $150 million into it. Wow. Damn. South Korean organization submitted a request for eSports consideration for the International Olympic Committee. So, uh, yeah, as whether eSports belong in the Olympic Games or even the Asian Games. Let's see. Uh, rifle shooting has been an Olympic sport for years, yeah. Skateboarding and sport climbing were added to the 2020 Olympics. Yeah, we got skateboarding. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm surprised that hasn't been added sooner. Yeah, it's just one of those stupid things. People are probably like, not that much of a sport or something. Right. So, uh, more than 20 million people tuned in to watch the Dota 2 Championship. That's, That's crazy. Cool. It had a peak of well over 2 million concurrent viewers, which is double from last year. Hmm. The Olympic Games this year had an average audience of 27.8 million viewers. So they're pretty close. That's pretty crazy. But the Olympics are shown on cable. Yeah. And the Dota 2 tournament was shown where? ESPN. Okay. So it was on some cable, and, and of course, I think the main way well, you watch that is on Steam, which right. is where Dota lives. You know, Valve is the company that put, actually puts that out. Yeah. Actually, funny story involving Dota, they announced, uh, there was some kind of, tur uh, not tournament, oh well, yeah, maybe it was a tournament, and maybe it was one of the qualifiers for Dota, the International, which is what the Dota 2 tournament is called. Mm -hmm. um, they announced a new Valve game. Did you ever play Half-Life? I know of it. I've never played it. So they made Half-Life and Half-Life 2, which are arguably two of the greatest single-player shooter story games ever made. Right. And um, I, I, I know about Half-Life 3. You know, yeah, that's never coming out. Yeah. So they also made Portal, Portal 2, Team Fortress, Team Fortress 2, Counter-Strike, also one of the largest esports games. Yeah. They were going to, they did announce a new game this year. And people went, what? That's incredible. And there's this video. I'll have to bring it up for you. Um, I'll try and put a link in the description. It, they, this video comes up and it says Artifact. And then it says a Dota 2 card game. And when Artifact shows up, people are like, oh, yeah. And then it says a Dota 2 card game. And you can literally hear all these people go, oh, <laughs> there's yeah. so many card games right now. It yeah. really is. There's Hearthstone, which is amazing. It's the first one. The Duelist, Gwent. Uh, uh, we'll see. There's a uh, League of not League of Legends. Fuck. Um, Elder Scrolls one is coming out. Oh really? And there's literally just a bunch of other ones. I don't understand card games. Um... Yeah, we need to play Hearthstone one day. Because the thing is, it's like Hearthstone, there's things you can never do in a physical card game. Right. Yeah, and you've shown me some of it. Which, I mean, I get, 
but it's an incredible game. And, and like, I sort of get like the magic online, so you can kind of play with anybody. Yeah. Yeah, but magic online even doesn't do that well, I don't think. Because people, because well, that's rather play the actual yeah. Game. yeah. Which I think we were talking about earlier, because I like card games. I would, I don't like collecting cards unless I'm, excuse me, gonna play the game. Right. So, I think that, that's really that's a shout out to Bearded Gaming Entertainment because he was talking about collecting Pokemon cards. That's always yeah. dumb. <laughs> uh, Hearthstone is just incredible. We don't need another fucking card game. It's just the the collective ah uh, from the crowd is very audible. Yeah. <laughs> and it is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. That's that's really funny. So, yeah. Dota 2 is just this juggernaut that cannot be stopped. And I'm really excited to see it. Hopefully I, it gets added to the Tokyo Olympics. That would be pretty cool. If it's appropriate. Supposedly mm-hmm. it's going to get added to the next one, though. I think that's the goal. Okay. And I guess one of the people who really needs to get past is one particular guy, and he's saying, well, I'm not sure if it's a sport or not. Right. Do you feel like it's a sport? Um. Which, go ahead. ahead. I could see it being in the Olympics. I mean, I, it's definitely a competition. Yeah. Um, we, I think we talked about, we talked about this with Brooks, which was pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. Who is yeah. a uh, high school football coach. Yeah. But, uh... Um, I think he said no, right? Yeah, he said no. Yeah. Um... I wouldn't say no exactly. I would say it's... I mean, it's not like, you know, playing soccer or hockey. Right. Or football. But is it competitive? It's definitely competitive. Yeah. Can, it's, it's, it takes a lot of practice to be good. Yeah, is it... A skill that you have to learn? Definitely. Could anybody do it? Probably not. Not just anybody could do it. I don't think I could... I know I couldn't play competitively. Um, you can barely play casually. Yeah, I can't even, I can't even play <laughs> As casually. As you can tell, if you go and look at our, our Let's Plays on the Best of the Realm YouTube channel... Which is why I'm getting a little nervous about this drum racing thing. Cause it's oh, like a real-life game, and I can't... Yeah, we gotta get you playing some more flying games or something. Yeah. Something. But, yeah, I, don't, I mean, it's definitely, it takes skill to do. So. My whole thing is like, you know, they're like, well, the definition of sport is like, but, definition of sport was made by man. So it could fucking change. Right. It's just so, it's it's very much like, well... The, the, the genetic makeup of this vegetable is why it can't be called a meat. Fine. But, right. like, that that's scientific. Sport, just definitions, you can change them. They change all the damn time. That's true. I forgot what the exact... I'm going to look it up right now. I think it's, it's like a competition of... The thing is... People bring up the whole physical activity thing. But, you, I mean, it is, you know, uh, uh, I think strokes per minute is a thing in, in StarCraft. It's, you know, how many commands you can put in. And it's yep. insane what those guys have to do. You have to have precise clicking in Dota. You have to have very good timing. Stri- uh, fighting games, which is kind of my thing. Yeah. Timing is everything. Timing and zoning is so important. An activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against another or others for entertainment. Yeah. So uh, the thing that people get hung up on is physical exertion. And it is a physical thing. It is a literal physical skill. Yeah. Now, if you could take a pro gamer and put him up against somebody, just your average Joe, and they were on the same level, I would say, all right, that's fine, fair enough. But it's not like we're asking for box stacking to be added to the Olympics. Right. It's not some silly, mundane thing. It is a 
sport it is a skill mm -hmm. whether people like it or not and YouTube is huge because of gaming yeah you know people are watching people play games now that's just a normal thing and it's going to be to remain normal it's going to grow so the Olympics just need to fucking do it already yeah I'd be surprised if they don't this, maybe not the next, maybe not this one coming up, but the next one I'd be surprised. Yeah. Um, it's going to happen soon. Yeah. Especially once all the old Olympic Committee members die. Right. Then it will definitely happen. It, it will take a new generation to change a lot of stuff. Yeah, well that's kind of the way the world works now. Like when you asked me earlier while we were at the store, when do I think DVDs and CDs are going to... When do I think you won't be able to buy them in the store anymore? Uh, you said five years. I think that's a little soon, but yeah, it, it'll be. Yeah. I do think eventually long. all of our media is going to be digital. Yeah. And because there's still those old people who go, they still go to Walmart looking for cassette tapes. Yeah, I know. I used to work at Office Max. So. It, actually, Office Max sells cassette tapes. Yeah. Yep. And VHS. Oh, no, they got rid of VHS. Oh, they got rid of both. Never mind. When I started there, they had VHS and Angus and tapes. Blank ones, though, right? Yes. Yeah, you could go and get, like, the new Conway 20 <laughs> album on Who? <cassette>. Cool. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought of when, uh, when I thought of a cassette tape. Conway they like Kanye West's original name? <laughs> what did you. What was it? Conway 20. Is that really a person? Yeah, it's a country singer. Oh, that's why I don't know it. Yeah. That, that's terrible. Dwight Yoakam? I know that name. <laughs> Sounds like a bad college prank. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight Yoakam. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. No, nah, I don't know. I don't listen to country. I don't either. I avoid it like the plague. Uh, we'll have to talk about music on here one day. Oh, yeah, I already, I already thought about that. But, yeah, I think dig digital media is going to 100% take over. It's taken over my life. When we were in there, I was walking around looking at DVDs like, I don't know why I'm looking at any of this. Because I don't want any of it. I want it, not in physical format. Right. Yeah, like, all of my... I moved into this house about three months ago or so. And I have not unpacked my DVDs, and I don't think I will. Yeah. Unless to it's to scan them and de declutter and mail them away and get a couple bucks for them. Yeah, you should. I have a handful I want to keep. Your stuff. wrestling stuff. Yeah, because I have some pretty rare wrestling DVDs. Yeah, I have some PWG DVDs I'll never get rid of. Yeah. Because they're not, like, a thing you can just go to Walmart and buy. Exactly. Definitely won't be able to in five years. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm right. But, uh, there are the rare exceptions. I bought Minecraft. I bought the physical disc of that. Because I would like to get all my favorite Minecraft YouTubers to sign it. Right. Um... Wrestling DVDs, like the Kevin Owens one I pointed out at Walmart. Yeah, I'd like to own that. Because you could meet Kevin Owens someday and have him sign it. Yeah. Um, I have the CM Punk Blu-ray. I would like to get the Daniel Bryan Blu-ray. I think I also have the Zack Ryder DVD. Hmm. Like, Best of Zack Ryder. I think it's Zack Ryder. I don't remember. Nah, no, there's probably not a DVD about Zack Ryder. I was going to say, how long I'm probably making that up. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm making that up. I don't remember who <laughs> That's I actually just a YouTube playlist. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But that's what's going to take over, man. There's digital media. It's pretty much already taken over. Yeah, and I hate to say it, too, because I'd like i rather have a... I always think I'd rather have a physical copy of it. I would rather have a shelf full of Gundams than DVDs. Oh, exactly. Yeah. That's where I'm at now. And that's where this podcast is at as well. Gundams. <laughs> this reminds me I need to finish up this order I was placing Seriously? You did that like hours ago Yeah It's taking so long I gotta find two dollars worth of stuff to get free shipping Get another weapon kit I probably will Get it If you want Get that Barbatos weapon kit And I'll give you the money for it The one you already got Oh yeah Cause I want that rifle Unless you don't want it We'll make a trade yeah, I didn't, that's, I got it for the mobile worker. Yeah, mainly. which was a disappointment, right? Oh, yeah. It's just all black. 
Yeah, which is fine, because I, I kind of planned on painting it anyway. Okay. But I was a little disappointed to see everything was cast in black. Yeah, you know, I, I did have a thought of, like, I would like to get a mobile worker and then find, like, a small figure and make it look like Orga. Yeah. I was like, no fucking way I'm recreating that haircut. <laughs> uh, no, well, that could be painted on. Yeah, could be. But Also, I think it'd be, I wouldn't be able to find a figure that small. That thing's small as hell. Yeah, you'd have to get an N or an O scale train figure. Okay. And they are... They're either super expensive or super cheap. Huh. You either get like a bag of a hundred for a couple dollars, or you get four of them for like fifty bucks. Also, it's just yeah, that's too small though. Even if I get a nice shelf, then you're not gonna really be able to see that thing. Yeah, they're they're pretty small. I don't know if N is smaller or O is smaller, but I want to get the I want to get the larger O too. Yeah. Uh, so what Gundams are you thinking about ordering? Well, in my cart right now, I have the starter set. Well, I have the Zaku one from Thunderbolt. Right. The yellow and black one that looks kind of like a construction suit almost. Right. Um, that's the one I'm most excited for. Uh, all high grade because I'm not. Yeah, we're not crazy. I, I I would love to build a perfect grade one day. But one day. That's just too much of a time commitment to me. Uh, well, now I have my my workspace kind of set up. Yeah. Like, I'm okay with it, but like, I don't have to finish it in one sitting anymore. But And, like, I explained this to one of the guys on Facebook, you know, I, I actually, I enjoy playing video games more. Mm -hmm. This, to me, is, is a small hobby. Um, I've tried watching the animes and I don't care for them. Iron Blooded Orphans is excellent. Right. It's excellent TV, not just excellent anime. Right. I care so much about those characters. That story went all over the place. Was just excellent. Excellent action, excellent storytelling. Ending was excellent. A couple things that kind of pissed me off. One character that should have been killed. Right. But, uh... No spoilers. Maybe we'll do a spoiler cast once October comes around and we can start watching the uh, new season. Yeah. I also, I might watch it subtitled. I want to watch it that bad. I don't like watching stuff subtitled. I thought about it on the same night. I might do it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there's also Build Fighters that looks kind of interesting. Yeah. They're, minor spoiler. Whatever clip you showed me today and they were fighting and they just... His arm popped off. Because the build fighters, they're toys. Right. They're not actual Gundams. Yeah, that was the uh, the opening scene for the first season. Okay. That yeah. just looked pretty hysterical. Yeah. like that, That's what made me want to watch it. I was like, that's pretty funny. But they're just not taking themselves seriously, which is fine. Yeah. Um, and there's some cool fucking kits out of that. Because yeah. I'm getting the end. Yeah, because... That thing is sick. That... It, Kind of gathers all of Gundam from all over the, all over the place from what I understand. You have the tri burning Gundam, which is incredible. That's yes. from Build Fighters, right? Yeah. Pretty free and sweet. Yeah, I, you weren't even care. You didn't care about the fire stuff, did you? you I didn't know it was in there. Oh, okay. I thought I was getting the cool trans. Did you say you weren't going to use it? I thought I wasn't going to. Right. But then I put it on. I was like, this stuff's pretty cool. Pretty so, awesome. Yeah. I'll just post those pictures up on the Facebook. Yeah, because I, I thought I was just really going to enjoy the uh, the blue translucent pieces. I was pretty excited about that. And then I opened it up and was like, what is all these orange pieces for? Right. And I looked at the side, and sure enough. They're almost like Super Saiyan. Yeah. And he's got like a really cool couple punch effects and a couple kick effects as well. So, pretty awesome. Would you have a picture of one of those? Yeah. I How'd you get him to stand in one foot? Balance. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Was well, he just balancing against the other guy? Mm. Oh? No, he's just balanced. I don't have that kind of patience. <laughs> um, one of my old hobbies was... It's called Articulated Comic Book Art. Right. And that was, You have a video, don't you? Yeah, I have a bunch of videos, actually, on my YouTube page. And it's setting up scenes with uh, comic book characters, 
uh, their action figures and little word bubbles and stuff and special effects and it's fun and I want to bring that to Gundam yeah I'm thinking about um, entering a build off at uh, Gundam from Japan and using the skills I learned from articulated comic book art to put into the build for that right I'd probably take like a little picture of like the character that's in whatever cockpit it is and give it like a word bubble and maybe some explosions or something going on in the yeah. background yeah that'd be cool yeah yeah you should do that you already built the hangar which looks amazing yeah I'm gonna hopefully finish up well not finish up but get farther on the hangar this way are you gonna make it bigger yeah okay so more fits in it yeah I'm definitely gonna make it wider um does it need to be taller? I don't think it necessarily needs to be taller. Um, One thing I was thinking about, and I, I should have brought them over, I do want to bring my Gundams over just to take pictures in it. Yeah. Almost like, like you know, some people build sets for eBay items. Mm -hmm. But that's what it was for the Gundams. Yeah, basically. That's what I, I should probably just build my own. Yeah, I think the one I have now, I think, cost me 60 cents. I should, I should buy a bunch of the materials, and we should make a video how to do it. Yeah. Did you that. figure that out, or did you find that in a video? I saw it on a video. Okay, that's okay. There are a couple of people who made a couple different ones. We can make our own. Yeah. I'll make a Zaku version. There you go. Well, what's the other one you got in the cart? Oh, yeah, the other the other set. Um, it is the... What do we got in the cart? That's what the name of the segment is. Bandai Hobby Gun Plus Starter Set. Oh, right. Gundam versus Saku 2. Which is, uh... What's that? What's the Gundam name? Uh... RX-78. Yeah, which is, like, the... Kind of the iconic one. Oh, it's the RX-78-2. Okay. Which is, yeah, the... The... Gundam. Like... Is, and is that Zaku? Is that a particular Zaku? Is that, like, your standard Zaku... Like, mass... Mass production kind of thing? Oh, yeah, I think it's the mass production Zaku 2. Yeah, it's not Char or Zar or whatever. No. Char. Obviously, we do not know Gundam very well. <laughs> we don't, but we're learning. We're learning it, and yeah. it's, for me, like I said, it's just like, I, I I collect action figures, and the fact that I'm able to build them is really cool. Yeah. Um, so far, I have the Greys. It's your standard Greys from Iron Blooded Orphans, because that was like the first thing I saw. I love just the look of it. It's really cool. I also really like Zaku's. Uh, that's why I've got the Zaku Sniper. Which, by the way, it, it, he, you know how he knees down? Yeah. And he has that, he has a, a stand that comes out of his knee. Nice. Works perfectly. Awesome. Like, his feet are super wide, and then that thing is just wide enough that I don't ever need a base for him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also the first one I had to do a little bit of surgery on, because the little... What, do you, what would you call the little things, the nubs that hold the parts on? I think they're called polycaps. Is that why it says PC? I think so. Okay, so the polycap I lost. So I basically, I just had to glue the, the right by his wrist. And then inside of the Gundam, I stuck it in there and held it. Because I have a brush on super glue. That's super useful. Super glue, super useful. Which makes me sad, because I feel like we could have fixed it. We could have yeah. fixed it. But it's fine, though, because he's literally, he's got one hand that's in the trigger finger yeah. of the rifle, and the other hand is always going to be underneath it. Right. And I don't think that one came with extra hands. There's no other things I could have done with it. Okay. So that's why I was totally cool with doing that. That um, makes sense. And, like, I lost the hand to the Gucci on remake. That's sucks. Which, so, the first thing I got were the Greys, the Sniper... Zaku Sniper, and uh, Sananju SD, which is like a little version of the Gundams. Yep. That was a super fun build. Uh, I feel like, you know, everyone told me to get high grades in the introduction. Yeah. Like, SD is a better introduction. Just because it's like a really quick build, and it's how you build normal Gundams, it's just really small. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you got a loved one, a fiance, even like a younger family member that might be into it, get him an SD. Or a bear guy. Or Bear Guy, yeah. Well, those are also, I feel like those are way, way easier to put together. Probably. You don't really get a good idea of how uh, world Gundams put together. Yeah, my 
almost four-year-old daughter was able to put one together, no problem. Did she put things together? I had her find the piece. Okay. Uh, I had her look at the instructions, and I would have her tell me what the piece number and part number, letter and number was, and I'd have her find it, and then I would clip it out and file it, file all the nubs down, and then I would set all the parts out in front of her, and she would have to put them together. And awesome. Some of it, it took, you know, some strength to pop it in. Sure. So I would, you know, give it a little extra push so everything fit. But, yeah. And then when she went to bed, I did the panel lining on it for her. Okay. And, um, yeah, she, she wants to paint it, so we're probably going to paint them together one day soon. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. She's going to paint it, like, black, something evil. Uh, what is, is she, it pink? Yeah, it's pink. I think she wants to paint it purple. Okay. That'd be pretty funny if she wanted to paint it something, like, totally different from... And you got two more, didn't you? Yeah, I got... She said something earlier about, like, chocolate bear. She wants the one that comes with the chocolate bar. Okay. But... Is that not the brown one? No, we just... It's just a brown bear. Huh. Um, with a red bow. Okay. But I got two of those today. One for her, one for myself. And we'll, we'll probably build those throughout the week. Kim has a builder. I bought her one. They're following you out, Kim. <laughs> build that gun. Yeah. Um, and then I got uh, the Gushan Rebake. Mm -hmm. Super happy with. Because I love that character. He's also... No, wait. But he doesn't. I'll say he also has the white feet. Which I like that a lot more. Just a solid white foot. Because the Gushan and the Barbatos have like split feet. I hate those. I do too. And almost, I, I think maybe even all of the Iron Blooded Orphans, they look like high heel shoes. Yeah. And I they hate really it. do. I noticed it on the one chick's gun gun. Now they look like, like she's wearing high heels. That's kind of mm -hmm. interesting. And then I noticed, oh, so it's Barbatos. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Uh, I have a Kamaris Vidar, and it's like lobster claws. Imagine if you got the one that's four legged. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. They're hard. They're hard to get to stand up. Yeah, but maybe they did that so you buy the bases. That's maybe what it is. It's pretty crappy. It would be pretty crappy. So that that's a marketing great company thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the next one that I'm gonna get is probably Ein's Grays, mm. the big one. Uh, I can't remember what the other one I was gonna get was. Ein's Grays. Oh, and Lofters. Whatever hers is called. Oh, yeah, yeah. One that, it, it looks like a jet with a torso and legs. And it does have arms. Yeah. Because I think I was watching the show and I was pretty much deciding I'm going to get that one because that's really cool. I like that character, too. And uh, and then, like, at one point in the show, it had arms. And I was like, what the hell? And I went and looked at the Amazon one. And I was like, oh, look through the picture. It's like, oh, yeah, it has arms. No, yeah. So that should be an interesting build. I like that's one thing I like about the Bushion rebate is in his backpack he has more arms to pop out. Oh okay. Because in the show I think he put like an axe or something in those arms. And I just think that's super cool. Mm -hmm. That name by the way is terrible. Rebake. It, it's it probably weird. means something. I'll look it, it up. It could. It could be a bad translation. Um, Even in the show he's like Bushion rebake. Um. Because they really rebuilt Bushion. Oh, okay. Bushion is the stumpy little green guys. That, remember them? Yeah. And the guy with the weird tongue? They captured those and rebuilt it into his. Because he was using a graze. Mm-hmm. He's like my favorite character in the, in the show. Akihiro. Did you have a certain character you kind of attached to? You know, not really. Yeah. Because I don't like the main character. I think he's very boring. Um. Yeah. I mean, maybe Biscuit? I love Biscuit. Yeah. Love me some Biscuits. But where? In his sister's cookie and cracker. Which is hilarious. And then their That's grandma so sucker. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess you didn't continue the, the trend. All right. Or didn't start the trend, I guess, with her. Yeah. 
But uh, I just thought that was always super funny in a show where everyone else. Also, uh, God, what's the name? The girl's name? Something, Gedalia. Oh, uh, the kind one of a weird name. She says a billion times yes, throughout the show. Which I'm surprised I couldn't remember it first. Gedalia Ina Bernstein. Bernstein. Yeah. Which is like a Jewish name. Oh yeah. That has to be a weird translation, right? Or is it Bernstein in the Japanese version too? I doubt it. No, it's not. There's not. No way. I don't know. Or maybe it is because maybe she's foreign. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That was just super weird to me. They usually yeah, she don't... does say it ten million times. Yeah. yeah, they usually don't translate names. Yeah, they didn't for the most part. I mean, Akihiro, Orga. Orga's an awesome character. Um, um, I also really, really like Taze. Is that the, the mafia guy that helps him out? I think that's his name. Oh, the guy with the fedora? Yeah. That guy's badass. And all the wives. Yeah. That was, that's incredible. I love their, like, is this ship ran by women? Like, what the hell? Well, yeah, they are. That, that show, old man, I hope feminists never get a hold of that show. And he's like, and they're all my wives. Yeah. These are all my children. Yup. And there's a lot of references to that. Yup. And once they get old enough, they leave, right? So it's almost like... I think so. Slave labor or something. No, 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 it's not. They said they go to school. When they get to a certain age, they go back home and go to school. Well, then they said something about how, uh, how he's always very busy. And... Yeah. And that's the thing that I always found funny about Lofter is all the innuendo that she says. Oh, yeah. It is freaking it's ridiculous. Terrible. And she is into Akihiro. Big time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's the intense one, I think is what she calls him, and then the pierced one is Sh Shino, Shiro, or Sh I yeah. don't know the name. Which, uh, which I love that when he finally got his own mobile suit and he named him, they were like, the hell did he just call it? <laughs> There's some really, like... You end up loving these group of characters. And just some of the banter they have is so fucking funny and great. Just, and just so we're aware. Yeah. In demonology, Gushion... Okay. ...is a strong, great duke of hell and rules over 40... ...or 45, according to other authors, legions of demons. Okay. Nothing about being baked. I'm not a baker. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the remake thing. And it's probably just a weird name. But Barbatos is also a demon, right? They're all... I think they're all named after demons. That's pretty cool. Because uh, the story is that there was a great war that was fought with the Gundams or ended by the Gundams. They ended I with think... the invention of Gundams. And the Alea Vinyata. Right. And, uh, and then all these Gundams pretty much went away. And they're hidden away. But I think Gallarhorn, which is kind of the primary villain, has most of them. And then Gallarhorn is, I believe it's Henball's horn? That he yeah, I know that has to be a thing, because there's an item in Destiny called the Gallarhorn. It summons uh, Ragnarok, I believe. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, so it's like... The end of the world. Yeah. And Gallarhorn's symbol is Odin's eight-legged horse. I don't know if okay. you've seen that. Yeah, I, their symbol. Yeah, the Gallarhorn symbol is the eight-legged horse. Hmm. <clears throat> I like the Tekken logo, too. Yes, the Iron Flower. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a bunch of extra stickers from Barbatos. Oh, nice. I think I actually might put them on Gushion. I don't think it'll show it's on there, but it should have been. But also, when you watch the show, and then when you look at some of the models, and like so, then you look at some of the illustrations, and like on the show, it doesn't... Like, compared to some of the illustrations and stuff, it doesn't show everything. Like, it doesn't show every little, like, symbol and warning. Well, maybe if you get the perfect grade. Oh, yeah. We, the master grade. When you get the higher grade models. Are there always. master grades in Barbatoon? Yeah, there has to be. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. would not make, do, make that. Uh, yeah, I think it was like 40 bucks at the at his shop. Yeah. And you have to remember the master grades are bigger. And that's the other, like, I've also got the Barbatoon. Sixth form with the big chainsaw wrench thing, and I don't like that build at all. 
No, you're not a fan. Uh, my hips are real loose. They don't lie either. <laughs> I think I might have to take him apart and just re-click that joints together. Maybe. His legs also just kind of slide out when you want to. <laughs> it's really annoying. Huh. Um, the, the hands, so you put... Yeah, the fingers, like the fingers and the thumb are separate piece from the back of the hand. Yeah. It's probably how your Camaras is. Yeah. So when I put the weapon in, because it's kind of heavy. Mm-hmm. And it's a huge chunk of plastic, and it's got another chunk of plastic with the chainsaw inside of it. So if I have him holding it like this, uh, with the back of the hand facing down, then the other side, because this is how it is on the box, back of the hand facing up at the other end. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the part that's got weight on it just snaps off every single time. So right now he's holding it look like it's stuck in the dirt kind of thing. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I might just have to super glue it, but I really don't want to. Because no. then it's super glued like he's holding that weapon for sure forever. Right. That way. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Bring it over here. We'll see if I can yeah. fix it. Um... Yeah, because I, I, I almost lost the back of the hand. Like, twice. Yeah. Because they're so small. Yeah, there are some tiny-ass pieces. And then that, that thing, at, like, the second or third time it popped off and I almost lost it, I was like, fuck it, I'm not even messing with this thing. Mm-hmm. Also, like I said, I want that Barbatos rifle. Yeah. Because I, I do like that. That thing kind of grew on me. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to get Eind Grays and Lofters, Mecha... Mecha Gundam, uh, and then my ultimate goal is the big Gunzaku and Sinanju. Right. Sinanju, the odd that thing is so pretty. Sinanju and Gundam Unicorn are definitely on my list. Is yeah, Gundam it's Unicorn the Barbatos of that universe? Oh uh, yeah, it's okay. like the hero. Yeah. Of... They all they all kind of look kind of sort of look the same. Barbatos, Unicorn, RX, whatever. Yeah, yeah, because they're it's all like the hero. Ooh. I just kicked your hat out, I'm sorry. Yeah, the giant ass. <laughs> so, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. Um, I just want to talk real quick about Player Unknown Battlegrounds because I just filmed a video with Bearder Gaming Entertainment in it. It's fucking hilarious. This game is incredible. You've watched Hunger Games, right? Yes. It's Hunger Games. Okay. You are in a plane. There's a hundred people, hundred players. Oh. You're flying over this island, and at some point you have to press eject. And you just jump out, you're in a parachute, and you land. You have nothing. You have to find guns, you have to find ammo, and you have to survive. Hmm. That's the whole point of the game. It's a third person shooter, you can also switch to first. Fucking incredible. We did a uh, playthrough of it. I get stuck in a fence, literally stuck in a fence, like yeah. the game bugs out. And, and the game gets, the map gets smaller by a blue zone, and you die if you're in it. Uh, There's also red zones that pop up randomly that's artillery getting shot at. We get stuck in that a couple times. Huh. Um, just fucking shenanigans. Bob finds out that I prefer Star Wars over Star Trek, shoots me in the head with a shotgun, provides me, demands that I say Star Trek is better, I don't, he shoots me again. Huh. Hilarious suits. <laughs> So check that out. That'll be on the Best in the Realm channel. Uh, I love that game. I have to play more of it. I have to. Uh, so we're going to watch... I guess October we're going to watch the drum racing thing. We'll have more episodes by then. We don't know if this yeah. is going to be a weekly show, monthly show, daily show. It's not going to be daily. <laughs> daily show. That'd be fun. That's goals. Goals, yeah. man. Support us. With Trevor Noah. Who, by the way, is very funny. Oh, yeah. I watched a couple of his stand-ups. Yes, he's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, if you like this show, let us know on Facebook. Let me know on Twitter at Best in the Realm. I also have a Patreon, and that Patreon is going to go towards this show and this this endeavor. Future villains. Yep. F E W T R U E V I L L A I N S dot com. That's the first time I fucked it up. Of course, it's the first time this first episode of this show. Go figure. And it is also 5.01 a.m. Yup. So. I told you I needed to stay here till 5. Yep. Kim's going to be messaging me any moment like, did you actually stay out till 5? Thank you. She has to go to work very soon. And, and she's going to be there for a long ass time. I've been yelled at because I've stayed up so late. 
and warn that I better be nice tomorrow. Yeah, you should be. I'll I'll come over and make sure you're nice. But I will not be nice tomorrow. I probably won't come over. <laughs> you won't want to. It is tomorrow is not going to be a nice day. Well, shit. So this will be this will be the first and only time we do this then. <laughs> now we'll do more of these. Well, first the only time we stay until five. Yes, but make it worth our while, guys. Listen, like, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Best Realm. I'm on Facebook. We're both, we're on Facebook. Future villains. Uh, find us on YouTube. I'll I'll make this a video format on that goes on Facebook and YouTube. Brian's on Twitter. At Brian twenty five, Instagram uh, Brian eleven thirty eight, and you can see some of my articulated comic book art, and all kinds of other nerdy stuff on my YouTube channel. Just call him Hardcore Hobby Holly, Triple H. Right. All right, let's stop. <laughs>